Hi, I'm Daniel Musgrove, and it's my honor and privilege to bring to you Musgrove Music Gospel Hour. Welcome to Kingdom Lifestyle. This is Pastor T. Gordon. Thank God that you're here with us, and we're going to have a great time. I want you to get your Bible again, and we're going to go right into it and talk about what God is doing. I am excited about what he's doing in this 21st century. All right, last week we talked about, I'm going to go right into our Bible study. Last week we talked about um, the Bible, and I just want to clear some things up on some of the things that I talked about. We talk about the Bible being the Word of God. No dispute. The Bible is the Word of God, right? But it is divided into two distinctly different parts. It has one part is law, and you have the principles of law, and then you have another part, the other part, which is grace, and you have the principles of grace. Um, the first part of the Bible deals, or dealt rather, exclusively with the children of Israel. God chose the children of Israel through whom he would establish Jesus Christ. So every prophecy in the old was fulfilled in Christ, right? So it's important for us to make that distinction because of the principles and functions all right, the function of the old covenant dealt with the blood of animal, right, with um, the Levitical priesthood who were the people that were put in position to administer to the house of Israel. Once per year, they will bring their offerings, their special uh, animals, and they would sacrifice them. And then the blood of those animals will be sprinkled and that will produce the forgiveness of sin. It was like a band-aid. It was not the ultimate thing because they were still waiting for Christ to come on the scene. So that's the first part of the Bible. So we have to make the distinction because the first part of the Bible deals exclusively with animal sacrifices. All right? So you have the law. Now, the second part of the Bible, which is the new covenant, deals exclusively with Jesus Christ to the entire world. The function is his blood. His death produced the blood, right, that, that people's sins could be forgiven. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. That's in the book of Hebrew, right? So we must understand that the book, the New Covenant Bible, uh, deals differently. It has a different function than that of the old. The old was basically dealing with animal. The new is dealing with Jesus Christ shedding his blood once and for all. So it's important that we make that distinction and not bleed anything into. Uh, the whole cannot be bleed into the new because of the function. All right. So when you see somebody keeping the law or trying to practice the law and to um, produce righteousness by the law, then that's a problem because you cannot worship under the the new covenant and practice the old because you're bleeding into each other. Everybody understand? So it's important to understand it. And I want to make it clear. If I have to spend more time on it, I will. But we must understand that the new covenant is different from the old. It's the one Bible. The old covenant dealt with Israel. The new covenant is dealing with the entire world, including Israel. All right? So we must get that. All right, so the first part of the Bible, God dealt, God dealt with five men, right? He made covenant with five men. He made a lot of covenant, but five men in particular, he made covenant with. And these were Adam, um, Noah, and uh, Abraham, Moses, David. These five covenants are specifically dealing with, with Jesus Christ. And as you will see once we get into them, how they relate to Christ. Once Christ came on the scene, it's like a funnel. You know what a funnel is? It funnels, it goes in. So they decreased in Christ, right? The old covenant decreased in Christ. And then when Christ died, 
and rose from the dead, he established a new covenant. That's in Jeremiah 31, 31. Jesus said, I will establish a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. That covenant was established immediately when Christ rose from the dead. Now, if you go to Matthew 26 and verse 28, it says that while they were sitting around the table, this was just before Jesus Christ uh, go to the cross, that he established the Lord's Supper. And what he said there was very profound. He said, this is my blood in the New Testament. So we realize that it's the blood of Jesus that establishes the covenant, the new covenant, right? The blood of animal established the old covenant, but the blood of Jesus establishes the new covenant. Important to understand that so we don't miss that. All right, so Jesus Christ gathers apostles, his disciples around the table, and before he went to the cross, he said, this is what I am doing. This is why I came. I came for two reasons. I came, one, to get rid of Adam, what Adam did, and then two, to establish a new kingdom in the earth. And the new covenant is what we're living by today. We cannot live by the old covenant because the function is different. We're not dealing with animal blood anymore. So Christ is the living sacrifice, and he is the one who established the covenant. All right, everybody understand that? So we're going to be talking about the new covenant in detail, but for now, let's continue to establish what Christ did. You know, we John 3, 16. Most people read John 3, 16, and it's a very short verse. But did you know that the, the verse in itself is not a complete verse? There is, there is two parts to the verse. The first uh, 12 to 13 words in John 3.16. Let me go there real quick and, and show you what I'm talking about. Bear with me. John 3.16. Uh, let's go there real quick and I'll show you something. Uh, if I can find it. Here it is. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever... Wait, wait, I want to stop there. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. We have to stop there. God gave Christ without condition because the Bible says, For when we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. So what God did was gave Christ as a gift to the entire world. Now, if we go into detail and dig deeper, we'll understand that what Christ did was paid for, for what happened in the Garden of Eden. Remember, God told Adam, in the day you eat of this tree, you will die. Now, that was not just physical death. That was spiritual death. And so Christ had to reverse that, that curse. From Adam, so that all of us will have another opportunity to life. We now are back in the same position where Adam was, if you understand what I'm saying. God gave us Christ so that we can choose. So this is the second part of John 3.16. That whosoever, there it is, there is a condition. There is something that we have to do, Right? that requires our attention, our decision, we must make a choice now. God so loved that he gave that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And this is the condition that we have today. So you can say that Christ brought back the tree of life, brought back an opportunity for us to choose again and, and did reverse what Adam did in the bad decision that he made uh, while in the Garden of Eden. So John 3.16 is two, uh, two parts as well. You have the first part that talks about God's gift, and then you have the second part that talks about what we must do as individual to make the right choice in life. Everybody understand? We can't just say, well, what Christ did on the cross is going to save you. No, you have to do something. You have to choose him. You have to, to make the decision to follow him. And that's why the scripture is so important. All right? So we're going to be talking more about John 3.16, but we're going to move forward and talk a little bit about 
the the seven principles of the of the Bible of the kingdom, seven principles of the kingdom. All right, the principle number one is the blood of Jesus Christ, and uh, principle number two is the foundation of the church. Principle number three is the gospel of the kingdom. How many you know that we must preach the gospel to every creature? That's the commandment. That's the great commission. All right. Then we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit. If you're living today and you don't have the Holy Ghost, I am encouraging you to make sure that you don't leave this life without him. We must receive the Holy Spirit. Is that right? We have to speak in a new language. We have to speak in a heavenly language. And then we're going to talk about the born again experience. All right? Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. And we need to understand what he's talking about there. Then we're going to look at the history of the scripture because a lot of Christians don't understand the history of the scripture. And we need to look at the history of the scripture if we're going to understand in context what Christ is dealing with, what he's talking about. And then finally we're going to look at the second coming of Christ and the rapture of the church. Oh, I can't wait to talk about that. All right, so thank you very much for listening. God bless you. We love you. We're going to take a break and come right back with Kingdom Lifestyle. God bless you. Musgrove Music presents brand new album by Daniel Musgrove on Bending Knees in store now. Pick up your copies at iTunes, eMusic, Amazon MP3, Google Play, or wherever music is digitally sold. You will be blessed. Follow Musgrove Music on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube for all our latest releases. Musgrove Music, where praising God is our business and business is good. Okay, we're back. This is Pastor T. Gordon, Kingdom uh, Lifestyle. Welcome back. We've been talking about the Bible and how important it is for, for us to make the distinction between the whole and the new covenant. And I think by now you get the you get the drift of what I'm saying. I'm not trying to make any confusion to give you any kind of false information. I just want you to understand that in, in reading the scriptures, that you understand the difference between old and new covenant. That's all. You understand that the Bible over here was to the Israelites, to the house of Israel, and the Bible over here speaking to the entire world, including the Israelites, all right? I want to talk a little bit more, get into, go into detail about why the nation of Israel today is, is, is just like any other nation on the face of the earth, because everybody sin and everybody needs Jesus. I don't care where you, you live, where you were born. You need Christ. Uh, under the old covenant, though, God only dealt with them and everybody else needed to be a part of them. But today, everybody needs to be a part of Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Now, the distinction is is um, is, is right there, or the emphasis is made in, in if any man, any man, no, no, no one is exempt. Everybody have the same problem. We're all born sinners. We are born with a defect. We 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 were we're in need of Christ. All of sin have come short of the glory of God. Amen. Now we move from there, and now we're talking about the seven principles of the kingdom. And 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 one of the principles is the blood of Jesus Christ. And we we want to make it very clear to everybody what the blood of Jesus Christ represents in the earth. You know, we don't want to take it lightly. In fact, uh, Paul, and I believe Paul re wrote the book of Hebrews, when he says in chapter 2 that um, uh, how shall we escape if we neglect what Christ did? Man, what Christ did on the cross is a big deal. You know, a lot of people say, well, Christ died. I don't believe Christ died. I believe death died on the cross. Death really <laughs> met his match on the cross. So the blood of Christ is important in the earth. It's, it's, it, it has all power. It can heal us, deliver us. When you plead the blood in your home, it makes a difference. And, and, and we got to get back to the blood. Amen? That's something that we got to start um, allowing to function in our life. We need to, I, look, I believe in, in you walking around your home and anointing it with oil and clean the blood of Jesus because there's spirits out there that's trying to destroy us. Hi, my name is Pastor T. Gordon. 
I want you to join me every Sunday night, 7.30, right here at Mushroom Music Gospel Hour.